Okay, well, by the wonders of technology, I'm delighted to be joined by four of the Wembley 2000 squad um, that helped promotion uh, from Division 3. Mark Tyler, Steve Castle, David Oldfield, and a rather um, still Andy Edwards. I'm presuming that he's either gone asleep already or he's, uh, he's just having a little break in the right-hand corner. I um, wanted to get you all together um, just to discuss um, Wembley 2000 because obviously this year uh, you look at that like he's disappeared already Andy Edwards what an absolute disgrace almost I mean he, he, he did lift the trophy so I suppose he'll uh, we'll let him off on that point while he gets connected back in um, I want to talk uh, to you three about the, the semi-final first um, against Barnet um, we'll start with you Stevie um, who's in my top left it's not celebrity squares this it's quite interesting um, Obviously, the semi-final against Barnet, the first leg uh, was a 2-1 victory. Um, what can you remember about that game in particular? Obviously, um, um, Dave Farrell scored, had a goal disallowed. Andy Clark, obviously, Jason Lee scored. What can you remember about that particular game? Um, I think the, the, the biggest recollection was that there was a, a, an half-decent atmosphere at uh, Underhill. Um, every time I used to go there, it was one man and his dog in a, in a reserve game. And... The odd game that uh, we, we would be playing against Barnet, we didn't. Uh, they, they didn't have the greatest of crowds, but uh, it was uh, it was filled to the rafters. Um, it was quite a, a tight game, if I remember rightly, um, and there wasn't an awful lot in it. And yeah, we we nicked it. Um, I would would I say against the run of play? I don't think we were the better team. I thought it was quite even, and probably Barnet would have looked at it that they could uh, feel themselves a little bit unlucky than at least going into the second leg with, with, with a draw. Mm. David, uh, when you uh, won that game 2-1, what was said by Barry? Did he sort of say anything at all in regards to the second leg or was Barry's tactical masterstroke just shouting and encouraging you to uh, go forward and shoot, shoot, shoot? <laughs> If I'd have, um, if the game was yesterday, I'd have probably forgotten what, the, what was happening at half time, but let, let alone 20 years ago. Um, we were very conscious that it was only half time in the game at the end of the, of the Barnet game, the first leg. And um, we knew that it was an even game. We knew we had a lot of work to do. Um, I cannot remember specifics, to be honest. But um, apart from the fact that it's very close, as Stevie said, and that we, we needed to uh, make sure that we were ready for the second game. Um, we were on a decent run, I think, from memory. And um, we felt that we, 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 would, we had a big chance and uh, we got a good result in that first game. And we felt, we, we felt going into the second game that we had an opportunity, definitely. Yeah, Tiles, obviously that second leg went as well as it could possibly go. Um, Dave Farrell scored what's always been described as arguably the greatest hat-trick you, you'll see. Um, obviously, you had a pretty good view from where you were standing. I don't, I don't remember you having to do much in that second leg. Just watch. Yeah. Um... Faz was uh, unbelievable that night. You know what I mean? He um, tore the right back and left back to shreds. Um, three goals were unbelievable. You know what I mean? He scored right foot, left foot, chip from 40 yards. And, you know what I mean? So he um, obviously stole the show. But I think the hard work was done in the first leg. I think it could have been more comfortable in the first leg if obviously Clarkie didn't score uh, the offside goal. Um, obviously, it was a tough game there. But obviously coming back to London Road with a big crowd. Um, we obviously fancied ourselves and, uh, you know what I mean, Faz stole the show and uh, made it quite an easy game in, the, in, in theory, you know what I mean? So, uh, delighted I kept the clean sheet and uh, obviously coming back from injury, uh, it was another game under my belt. Yeah. Stevie, obviously, um, most people, when they score a hat-trick like Dave Fowle would have done, he would have gone out on the town, painted it red. Um, I think he went home and had a pizza. From recollection, that was the type of guy he was, I guess. Uh, it was, but I think uh, the rest of us made up for it. Uh, I think we uh, we done the celebrating for him. Um, it was uh, it was an unusual one, in as much that you know it wasn't one that you you had to look after yourself afterwards because there was a, a big ten day break. Um, one in which I think we went over to uh, to Jersey as a as a little bit of a treat for us. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah, we had, we had a bit of time to celebrate the semi final, and then obviously to get our heads down and, uh, and, and prepare ourselves for the uh, um, prepare ourselves for the final. Now before we oh, talk about Andy, that, he's coming through it to me now. Yeah, well, I'm just I'm just letting him back in because um, the thing is with you guys, you obviously played a long time ago, so technology is you know a bit of a challenge. Oh, there he is. Hey, Eagle. Uh, 
He, he's made Honestly. it back into the room. Andy, what, what, you, what you've missed, basically, we were just talking about how wonderful a player you were. Um, uh, Good. <laughs> we, we, we just that that didn't take the, long. Yeah, we have been talking <laughs> about the yeah, semi-final. Um, we're just talking about the fact you went to Jersey in between the semi-final and the final. Um, was that good for team bonding? I think it was, yeah. There was, um, I think it was a good night out one night. Although I got injured, I had a slight injury on that, that week, that train, that training week. So I was a little bit concerned. So I was uh, quite professional a couple of early nights. But yeah, from what I remember, a few, a few of the lads did indulge. Uh, any names mentioned? I, I, is there anybody here that you know you, you're going to stick to the? No, no. This group were very professional to a man. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll pay you later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. David, um, what were preparations like for the final? Obviously, we, we were speaking to Steve, sort of off off air, so to speak, talking about the fact it was on a Friday night. Um, England were playing the following day. W was that a little bit weird in terms of uh, you know getting the mindset right for the game? Well, after I spoke to you a couple of days ago or, or, or texted, I was trying hard to remember. But was the game changed late to a Friday? Can you remind me of that, Phil? Um, I, well, it was England-Brazil that was taking place on a Saturday. Um, and uh, I, I'd imagine that game was probably put in relatively got, late notice. Yeah. The, the, the preparation was, was fairly good. I remember perhaps a session directly prior to the game, more than, um, more than the, the build-up particularly we, we didn't do many things that were different we prepared properly we tried hard. we knew about diamonds and they were a good side and were hard working and, and a lot of threat too so um it was a, a decent week it, it, interesting that eagle says he had a little pickup of niggles and there's always those kind of little concerns in the, in the week before those big games but it is a tricky kind of um preparation really with with the gap between the semi-final and the final you've, you've got to try and get it right the balance between resting a little bit and, but making sure that you're you let your head down perhaps and getting that squad spirit together uh, I hadn't been in the club that long so it was a, the jersey was an opportunity to really get to know people as well so it was um, an interesting balance between getting some rest done but also making sure that we were ready for the game and and although we weren't fantastic in the game. Collectively, as a group, the boys defended very well. So it was, the preparation was right and it was thorough. Again, specifically, I cannot remember particularly, maybe the boys can, about... We had two, we had two days in trouble. We had two days away, didn't we, before? On the, we stayed away on the Thursday and the Wednesday and we trained in London somewhere. We were morning. one of the big hotels, weren't we? Um, yeah. St Albans Way, was it, Stevie, perhaps? Yeah, I or? think so, yeah. It was the Marriott at Cheson because we went Chesson. over to the Tesco's, uh, or what is the Tesco's uh, sporting social club. Uh, it's, it's, it, 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 uh, I think it still exists. Um, but, uh, yeah, we were, we, we were just on the A10. So David Oldfield can't remember anything, whereas Stevie's named the hotel, what it is now. Um, Probably knows his room number. number. <laughs> He's had a more highlights than me. That was my that, that was my one. <laughs> um, Charles, obviously you were playing Darlington. Uh, Darlington, obviously, were um, you know had spent a bit of money. Marco Gabbiadini was someone that everybody knew in the league. As, as a goalkeeper, would you, did you do anything different in terms of preparation for that game? Uh, no, I just had the obviously the two training sessions uh, before obviously the Friday night, um, and then obviously. To be fair, we had a bit of, I think, if I remember rightly, we just had a bit of fun on the Friday, just low tempo and uh, obviously didn't want to make it too, uh, not, don't, not disrespect from the game, a bigger game than normal, um, but, you know, I mean, kept it light-hearted and, uh, no, I didn't do anything, just had a good session with Tony Godden uh, for the two days and uh, just got me self ready in that way. Um, Andy, uh, as a as a responsible man uh, that you were um, leading the line, did you did you have to um, involve everything with the tickets? Did you in charge of making sure that everyone got where they needed to get in Wembley? Did people bribe you for more tickets? How did it work? Um, I, I do remember the tickets because nobody ever used to come to watch me play. Very rarely, you know. So I, I was often giving my tickets away to other players, but but because it was at Wembley, I think I had about eighty five tickets or ticket requests. Um, so that, that was a, a big commitment. I, I don't remember sorting anyone else's tickets out. I think we got four, maybe four comps, 
So I had to purchase about 81 of them. Um, and then it was a decision to, to know what to do with my bar tickets, of which we got four, which um, uh, there's, a, there's a, a place in Lanton High Street where I live that managed to, to copy the tickets we had. So I managed to get about 50 or 60 tickets. So that was good for the bar, which that always sticks in my mind because I'll give Steve a few. I mean, if the other lads mentioned on the day of the game, Wayne Turner knocked on my door and uh, heard that I had some, some extra bar tickets. So I thought I was in a bit of trouble, but he, he wanted a few for his, uh, for his family. So I remember that with the tickets. That was quite a big thing, big organisation. But, but yeah, Steve spot him at a hotel. It's absolutely smashed it down the rain. I think it was a big concern, certainly in my mind, being a pessimist, that, that the game was going to get called off and we was going to miss our chance to play at Wembley. Um, but fortunately, it went ahead. It was Germany the next game, the next day, Phil. England, Germany, I think. I was, I was bound down to Steve's knowledge, and given yeah. the fact you named the, named the hotel yeah. and everything, I didn't want to yeah, disagree. No, with don't, him. don't always trust him. Don't always trust him. But no, it was it was Germany the, the next day. But but yeah, that's sort of what I remember to the build up of the game. Yeah, it was a hotel in Chesham and sorting out tickets. But uh, it was just such an exciting game for well, certainly for me and Steve. Ozzy had a few more highlights, and well, it was a big game for Charles. He was a young a young player at the time. Um, but yeah, I think Barry, Barry really built the game up. You know, I don't think we were low-key about it. You know, we went to Jersey, which we'd never done. We had suits measured, you know, in Peterborough. Uh, I know Darlington turned up in track suits. So I think, you know, we all knew the enormity of the game. But I thought Barry played on that and not played on it, but enjoyed it really. And we enjoyed the occasion. We enjoyed the semi-finals, uh, the two legs on that. Enjoyed, a, remember, a really good night out in Peterborough. Um, yeah, so, so it all... It was a great, great time for us all. They, they always say um, when it's raining, it always suits the strikers uh, more so than defenders and goalkeepers. Tiles, as, as a goalkeeper, did, did you relish playing in those conditions? Uh, not in the warm-up. I had probably the worst warm-up in my whole career. I, did, I couldn't catch a thing in the warm-up. It was, it was that wet and I was getting stressed. And Tony, to be fair, Tony was brilliant. He came over and said, look, don't worry about it. Just, just do a few things that are make you uh, feel the ball and kick the ball properly and then I'll see during the game the first kick I fell over and I was thinking oh, I'll just go have a night and lucky touch with um, it, it went okay but yeah I, I love playing in the rain it's, it's you know what I mean I love getting dirty and diving diving around and stuff like that so um, but yeah I just remember the warm up was horrific Steve uh, Steve, I was just going to say, when you're an outfield player and you're playing at Wembley, are you desperate to get the first touch out of the way as quickly as possible? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, reflecting on it, um, I would say that would be, you know, sort of a, an accurate one. I think that's in any game, really. Um, but, you know, probably just as a collective, just to try and calm down and, and try to get to, 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 to get the occasion out of your out of your system as it were and, and, and try and play uh, you know sort of as, as good as we could possibly do. Um, whether we did that, I don't know. But you know, you'll see plenty of you know sort of finals at you know wherever they are really and, and there's always an edge to it because there's just so much to lose for, for, for both teams, especially playoff finals. Yeah, the first half, Steve, as I say, I don't think there was too much to write home about from our side of things in terms of creating chances. Um, what was said at half time? Can you remember what Barry said in the dressing room? Did, or is it so, um, what's the word? It, it just sort of moulds into every team talks, you know, Barry shouting. <laughs> Uh, you've, you've you've got that last bit. That's that's the best phrase that I can see. Barry shouting, saying how crap we were, really, um, and that would probably cover the the three or four years that I spent with Bess. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, bless him. He he used to get us going, and then uh, and then leave the uh, leave, leave the coaching aspects to uh, you know sort of people like you know David, myself, and Steve Butler at the time, and obviously Wayne. Who was who was the main man in in, in charge and, and 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 Wayne was a you know I mean Andy and I spoke this morning and uh, and I think Wayne really deserved an awful lot of plaudits because uh, it was an up and down season and I think he just steadied the ship, got the best out of uh, out of everybody that was was involved in the squad. Yeah, Andy, what was he like, Wayne, in terms of a, a character? Was he someone that um, was very organised or was he someone who could have a laugh? What, what type of guy was he? I think he was a little bit of everything, really, uh, uh, Wayne. Like Steve said, uh, he came in and made a massive difference. He, he got us really organised. 
I think real clarity in our roles, how we played. Um, but but he was also a fellow that could could really have a laugh and you had, you had respect for. Um, couldn't speak highly enough of him really. He's probably, in all honesty, he's probably the best coach I've played for. Um, didn't play well. Steve was very good, and I worked with Steve later on as a manager. Um, but but Wayne was excellent, I thought, um, just just in every aspect. And and he's somebody where you where you look at. I played for some really poor coaches that have been very successful. Uh, and some really good ones that haven't and, and it just shows you need that luck in the game and, and the opportunity which, which you probably didn't get after after leaving Peterborough. Yeah David obviously um, as, a, as a forward so you sort of you're a midfield player that played in a bit further forward you saw sort because of, we, we lined up actually with Clarky up front and you were just off him I think pretty much in terms of in terms of that what I mean I don't want to be disrespectful to Clarky, but he wasn't the, the, the sharpest tool in the box um, was he a, an interesting player to play with? Yeah, I think that's a bit harsh. Clarkie was very quick when he wanted to be, mm-hmm. uh, both physically and mentally. If he, he, when he was switched on, he was very difficult, a real handful. Um, and he was good to play with. I, I haven't seen Clarkie in a long time. I'd love to find out how he is. Um, but he was a good player, good goal scorer, sometimes a little bit hit and miss as we all were uh but I enjoyed playing alongside him and throughout my career I kind of played half of my career as a as a centre forward and half as a as a midfield player and I hadn't played very often as I don't think as a striker from for Peterborough when I first at that stage before the final so getting used to Clarkie was yeah was just something we, we just got on with but he was willing and he was uh honest and, and ran and worked and sometimes had his moments but w- w- could be a real game a game changer at two so uh, I enjoyed playing with Stevie Clark uh, uh, and it was um, uh, with uh, Andy Clark sorry and, and talking about what you're saying about Stevie about getting touches early in the game for my memory I probably didn't touch the ball for a while maybe 10 minutes perhaps perhaps or trying to battle or perhaps trying to hold the ball up but being very ineffective in that first half really it was a collected effort and keeper and uh, Tarsi and the defending boys and the midfield lads really did play well and kept us in the game in that early period mm. because uh, Darlington had some threat but um, it, 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 yeah Clarkie was good he, he was decent he had a good goal scoring record and he was a handful real handful um, Andy, uh, did you sense that it was going to be a game decided probably by one goal? I know it got to half time at 0 0. Did you feel it was that tight that any kind of mistake is going to be, be costly? And as a defender, I guess extra concentration was needed. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it was always going to be a tight game. I always had that fear of making a mistake. A bit like Tiles as a goalie, I think, yeah, it's your biggest concern, your biggest worry. And we did. We started the game slowly. I know I started a little bit slowly and, and then to get that feel. And, and get used to the pace of it was quite difficult, maybe because of the, uh, you know, the occasion itself. Um, but as the game went on, we didn't create much, and you, you thought it was going to say maybe, maybe that one chance, and that's what it obviously come down to. I remember, um, I remember Tiles making a save actually, a, a brilliant save in the second half, and I didn't know when it was. I always remember that because it was a top save, I think, from Gabardini, and and it is the first time I look back at it. The other night, actually, when you, you asked us to do this, and, and it was, I think it was at one, well, it was at one nil, and, and that was such a vital, uh, such a big save for us as well, just after Clark had scored. Mm, yeah, Charles, obviously, we talk about Clark's goal in a second, but as Eagles mentioned it, that, that save, doubly difficult because, of course, it was, it was a, such a wet night. I mean, um, you got a, a, a really strong hand to it. Yeah. Um... To be fair, it, I saw it late, so I sort of made the save behind me and uh, it, it literally came off my little finger, so I, and I just prayed it went past the post and obviously, luckily it did and obviously after that, um, Eagle, or everyone, to be fair, Simon Ray, Scotty, who had obviously Jelly come on after about 10 minutes because obviously Adam Jury got, um, he, uh, he got um, knocked out, so... Obviously, Joel's come in and done well and got man a match. So the, the back four uh, magnificent after the well, whole game, really. And obviously, you know, what I mean, that's, that's what I'm there to do, make the save. And luckily, it just went round the post. 
Yeah, Stevie, um, Charles mentioned, obviously, with Jury going off, Gareth Jellyman, obviously a very young lad at the time, came on and, and performed superbly in that position. The younger lads that were in that side at the time, did you and David and, 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 and Eagle have a, a key role to play in ensuring that they got through it? Uh, yeah, I suppose. Um, I mean, they, they deserved... Uh, the, the respect that we gave them in, in regards to, you know, the, the guidance. I mean, I think we were just looking at trying to get through our, for our own games, really. Um, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to really be sort of like sort of truthful here in regards to the three lads you've got, Charles, Andy, and, 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 and David. And, and I thought those three were were excellent on the night. You know, obviously Andy, Andy got the goal. Uh, I think I was just having a battle with a lad, Gray, and we just sort of blanked ourselves out. And I don't think I had a massive contribution into the game. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, for Gareth to come in and, and just sort of come in and, 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 and perform as well as he did, you know, the back four were excellent. Tiles was, you know, he pulled off some saves that, you know, it, it was just out of this world. And yeah, yeah, again, to be truthful, were Darlington and probably, you know, looking at that afterwards. And, and I think they would think that at least it could have got into extra time or anything, you know. But uh, we just had that that killer touch in, 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 in Mr. Clark. Um, David, uh, Clarky's goal um, scored with his right foot, obviously, after the initial one was saved. Can you remember where you were on the pitch, what the feeling was when the ball hit the back of the net? Um, yeah, I've looked back on the goal in the last day or two since, since this has come up and um, I think it was a diagonal, maybe from Faz or perhaps Jay, I can't remember, and aimed maybe towards me, but I didn't get close to it. Uh, born up in the air and I think John Cullen won the second ball and it fell to Clarky who swivelled and hit it with his right foot. Keeper made a good save, uh, but he finished the rebound really well and um, it, it was a kind of... Uh, it was so so wet, wasn't it? The, it? the rain was incessant that night. It really was wet. It was, it was a kind of a real a kind of shot through you, a real buzz of adrenaline through, and um, knowing that that was uh, such an important to score the first goal was going to be so in such an important moment in that game. Uh, I can't really remember the celebrate. Just could Clarky run far? I, I don't really think so. He uh, <laughs> he might have been tired himself, but. Um, it was a big relief and a big shot. I think um, we, we had a few chances afterwards, didn't we? Uh, we came really into the game for that last 20 minutes and, yeah, no, really uh, and, yeah, and, and, and showed, showed some qualities and, and really kind of gave, a better, gave ourselves a better show into the game, I think, in that last bit. We were a decent side, had some good players. I think Stevie Castle was very uh, modest in what he's just said about us then. He, he, Steve Castle was very important to us. Uh, extremely uh, reliable, very important, very influential around the whole club, not just that, that team, but the whole club. So, as I say, I hadn't been in the club that long and, and to come into a, to a group of, of people with, with Carson and Edwards and, and Tyler around is, uh, was, was good for me. And it was, uh, it was uh, a real pleasure to be around. And it, it seems so, on the one hand, so long ago, doesn't it, 20 years ago? But on the other hand, it's just absolutely flown by so yeah. that goal was a very special moment definitely yeah you, you mentioned off camera as we, before we started about the fact that because it was so wet those shirts were so big and uh, obviously yeah. probably felt like they were dragging you down a little bit well they were they were <laughs> extra big shirts i remember that for sure um uh we've probably still got it somewhere in there somewhere but um gordon the kitman must have just sort of ordered a few mediums a few larges and by the time i joined that the club at the end, there's only extra large left. And uh, it, it, well, in that rain, they did, they definitely were uh, saggy. But um, but it was, uh, it was a great kit and a great night. And, and Charles, obviously, 1-0 up, obviously going into the final sort of 20 minutes of the game. As, as David said there, we actually grew and, and got stronger as the game went on. Did you ever feel in any danger at that point? I mean, uh, Eagle spoke about the fact he was a, a pessimist and was probably thinking the worst. Did you fear any of the worst at all? Um. I didn't feel relaxed because obviously it was, you know, I mean, any, like the conditions were really bad. So um, I think I can remember Scotty making a great block towards the end as well. Um, but we, to be fair, we defended really, really well. And uh, we did have a little bit of control of the game in the last 20 minutes. Um, but, you know, I mean, 1-0 is such a, 
such a, a horrible scoreline. You know, I mean, any mistake, you know, I mean, can lead to a goal, or I can make a mistake and it's a goal. Um, but luckily, we, we defended stoutly and um, made some good blocks, and the, the lads in front of me put put the put the bodies on the line, and um, and obviously we got through it. And, and Eagle, obviously, as the, as you were, the the time was ticking towards the 90 minute mark and and beyond, were you? Had you afforded yourself any moment in your head about what's it going to be like in a couple of minutes' time when this full-time whistle goes? To an extent, yeah, to an extent. A lot of things go through your head. You know, as soon as Clarkie scored, it was like, right, you know, we can't concede. And, and I felt we were in control, really. I think Richard Scott made one brilliant challenge alongside Siles' save. And that was probably the only two scares we had. So you're enjoying that moment of being one up. You're playing at Wembley. But obviously, you want the whistle to go as well. So, um yeah, that it was. It was a. It was a long thirteen, fourteen minutes. So over, no, I'm not too sure how long it was now. But yeah, you do. You do start to think about, you know, such a big thing. Us getting promoted, getting getting that back into the, the division above, which was, uh, you know, important for our careers as, as much as anything else. And when that full time whistle went, Andy, obviously getting promotion and being able to go up and, and collect the trophy and obviously get your medals, is that part of it so surreal? Do you, do you, do you try and enjoy it? Can you enjoy it? Go so quickly. You, you definitely enjoy that moment. Yeah, as soon as that whistle went, that, that was it. Just that, that huge relief that you, that you feel. It's a long season. You know, it's not just that night. It's the whole season. It's, there were so many ups and downs at Peterborough. You know, I think I joined in 96 or 97. And, and there were some real difficult moments when you thought, what have I done? You know, so, but, it, but it just got better as time went on. And we signed good players. And Steve come and Dave come. And good youngsters coming through the system, which, which made it a good place in the end. But initially, it was really difficult. So it felt like a, a real sort of culmination of, of all of those events over the three or four years that I'd been there on, on a personal level. Um, so that was important. Um, but yeah, we, we certainly enjoyed it. We certainly enjoyed it. And it also, also to remember, you know, on that night, we did have a few, a few injuries. Obviously, Adam goes off injured. Um, Dean Hooper was injured. You know, I'm not sure at what point, but didn't make the final. Jason Lee. So we had a really good squad of players there. And on the night we were tested with, with, with having someone available. Mm. And, and, and just lift, I mean, we've still got the picture. I think it's near our office, actually, in the, in the club, as David will know, having been there fairly recently. And Tal's obviously wandering around the building, desperate to get free tickets. Um, the, okay. uh, the, the picture of you lifting the trophy um, is, is very iconic. And, and I guess you've got that picture somewhere as well. I've got it somewhere. Yeah, I don't know where. I, I, I really genuinely don't know where. Um, I've got it in black and white. I think it was in the newspapers. So I haven't got an original, so you can send me one if you've got one, Phil. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, can, I can still picture it in my mind, yeah. Yeah, like I say, it was just a, just a huge relief, um, you know, when the final whistle went and, and, and just the whole night. It was, uh, yeah, I suppose that was almost the biggest emotion in some ways, relief. Yeah. And Stevie, what was that night like? Can you remember it? I mean, I, I guess it was uh, a few beverages might have been involved. Yeah, I did. I mean, you know, I was uh, I was coming to the twilight of my career, really. So it was I wasn't going to get too many more opportunities. So uh, you, you know, to win uh, at, at Wembley, especially. Um, where it was a it was a bit a personal one where you know my dad back in the day um, played amateur cup uh, final in in 1958 so it was always it was always an ambition for me to to, to play there um, what was I 34 35 by then and and, and I, you know there weren't many more opportunities and uh, I, I later found out that that was my last opportunity but uh, now we, we, we to, to win it uh, however we won it. We were going to enjoy it, and and I think that's what we were probably Premier League at was uh, in, enjoying uh, enjoying our victories. Is there, is there anybody you want to name who, who probably isn't in this room that that could be the uh, champion of the Premier League in in terms of that time? Oh no, that would be telling. That would be libelous, wouldn't it? Really. So uh, I think the Christmas dues would probably uh, would would go down in. Uh, in they've gone down in my in, in my head there, and and they cannot be repeated. I will say that. But uh, Stevie Butler knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> First rule of drink club is never to talk about drink club. Um, and and David, obviously, um, getting as you say, you've not been at the club a long a long time at that point. So to to, to get a medal, to get promotion so soon must have been a great feeling. Yeah, 
I feel very fortunate for that. Uh, did, did we spend some time at Mr. Boizo's pizza place after yeah, the game? We did. Uh, we, we, yeah. we went there for a, certainly for a spell. And um, that just kind of reminds me of that, that all the people that were around. I remember um, Franny Green came on and made a big um, contribution, didn't he? And um, uh, Richie Hanlon and, and so many others. And I'd known Wayne from my Luton days. When, uh, when I was a young player coming up at Luton, Wayne was a player there. And, and he was so influential in, in the difference and him and Baz were, were chalk and cheese but when they worked together as they did they, they were a really good combination um, so I feel very fortunate for that time definitely because I, as I said I hadn't been there very long but come into a decent group on a good run uh, and we managed to, to, to get promoted that year um, we did okay the year after I think from memory and um, it was a good time it was a good club and um, having that how, how it's interesting how the culture of drinking has changed it, it, it does give you an opportunity to get to know people but it, but it's not as it as it is now or the boys are a bit more subtle about it perhaps but um it, it was a, a a good night and a really good time and, and from my point of view very very fortunate absolutely and Andy, obviously, uh, as part of any success, you have an open top bus tour. And I always wonder, um, as players, what that's like, because it must be a little bit weird just waving and continuing to wave. And that, that's pretty much how it, you should go drive around the city, just waving at people like the Queen. Is, is, it, is it bizarre? Yeah, it's a little bit strange. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely strange. I remember sort of, yeah, we did enjoy the evening, enjoy the celebrations of, of the promotion. And I remember having to drive back up to Essex the next day. I think I was driven up. I say I was driven up anyway, so I had a terrible hangover because we, we enjoyed it so much. But yeah, getting on the bus, it was, it was probably the best thing for it in many ways. Yeah, but quite surreal. I think we had a, you know, we had a great turnout from the, uh, from the public and the supporters, which was, which was brilliant. And uh, yeah, it's something you, you, you see as a kid, you see that the big team's doing it. When they win FA Cups and things like that, so to get promoted from League Two and... Uh, and see, uh, see all the support was out was a, was a really good occasion. And, and Stevie, you showed us actually um, a, a little while ago that you got the shirt on the wall from, um, from Wembley 2000. And you, you, it's in a rightful place. You can see it all the time. It must be, bring back special memories for you. Yeah, yeah, no, it does. You know, it's just for, for the things I've just said uh, in regards to, to, to Wembley, uh, the timing of it, obviously just coming towards the end. I was... Lucky to have two promotions via playoffs, but the the first one was uh, I'm that old that they ne never actually done the uh, playoff final uh, at Wembley. It was uh, it was against the uh, the the, the um, sorry you, we played uh, a home guy uh, leg um, against Wrexham, um, and that was in 1989, I believe it was. So. Um, no, to, to to actually get to to Wembley was, was was the pinnacle. It has been a pinnacle, and 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 I'm very very proud of it, and I'm proud that we we ended up winning, and uh, it, you know with 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 Peterborough was was, was great. Do, do you mind flipping the camera around so we can just have a look at the shirt? No, no, not at all, not at all. There it is. Um, well done, Stevie. <laughs> Love that, Steve. Thank you very much. And as I say, um, Tiles, obviously, is someone who's still connected with the football club. I know David was just talking an eagle about the fact it was 20 years ago. I mean, you're, I mean, technically still playing um, because you, you can't say that R word. I mean, does it feel 20 years? Uh, I haven't officially retired till no. Um, yeah, it's, it's great being back. You know what I mean? Um, it's the next step in my career. So um, I still miss playing. Um, I still want to play. And go out on the pitch and you know what I mean, do my best like, like I always done. Um, but yeah, I, I um, yeah, haven't officially retired yet, Phil. <laughs> Not yet. We're waiting for that. Nor have I, Phil, actually. <laughs> So, I mean, technically speaking, neither have I, but I've got nothing to retire from. Um, it's, uh, Eagle, does it, does it feel, I mean, 20 years, is, it just sounds a long time. And, and the thing about it is with, with Peachborough, obviously, because, you know, the success that obviously in 2011, 1992, almost gets forgotten rather than, you know, rather harshly, it's described as a forgotten final. I know we've talked about the fact it probably wasn't a classic in terms of the the end-to-end the -end 90 minutes and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, it's a promotion at Wembley and success. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it probably does get forgotten a little bit. Obviously, promotions to the, to the championship, the, the two other promotions the club achieved either side of that. So for, for us, we, we don't forget it because we were, we were part of that one and not the other two. But 
which were brilliant achievements by the club. But 20 years, yeah, it does seem like 20 years. I see my son who's 23 years old. He was obviously a toddler then. That reminds you of it. But at the same time, you can you remember the feeling on the coach and you, you, so many little things you can actually take yourself back to that to that moment. You know, I always remember. Yeah, you know, loads of little things about the whole lead up. I remember Dave Olf would always tell me about how we played for Man City and scored two against Man United on the coach on the way to the game, which he did most days. <laughs> you know, that was a that was a common. There's, there's common no thing. chance that happened. No I'm chance. I'm sure. He, I'm sure he mentioned Even that. Even with and... my bad memory, I'm sure. That <laughs> but no, it's um, he's 20 years. There's no, there's no hiding behind that fact. And I'm looking at all the faces here, and it's definitely 20 years. It looks like 20 years more. 25 <laughs> years for one or two. I won't name names, but That's yeah, just feel that is. Yeah, I can't, I can't help that. It's aged me over the years. Um, it's, it is really... Yeah, I think it's the unique thing about you four as well is that um, you've all gone into to coaching in, in one way or the other. And, um, you know, we've, we've talked about Barry's style and all that kind of stuff. He seems to have spawned four coaches. Did you... I suppose at different points in your career back then, were you listening to, to managers, listening to coaches to try and glean advice? I mean, David, I'll start with you. Obviously, you've had a, a number of coaching positions with the EFL. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'd already taken my badges by the time I'd got, or certainly started the process by the time I got to Peterborough. So, and one of the reasons I came was to, Stevie was sort of a player coach, was to try and um, have that first sort of steps on the, on the ladder as well. So it was definitely valid and important to me. Um, and Wayne was very important and so were Baz. It, and the beauty of football is there's, there's so many ways to do it. And um, if you can pick up and uh, and look and observe but all the different ways, then uh, then there's always things to to learn. And I'm sure the boys would agree that we're all learning now, still learning. I've been fortunate to have a couple more spells on the coaching staff at Peterborough, uh, and it's been an important time. And I think um, it, 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 that those pictures just remind you how important the fans were at that time as well. It, uh, what a great turnout it was in the rain and coming down the train, all that sort of stuff. So it, it feels for me at that time the kind of the, the end towards the end of my career too I went I played for Oxford Oxford for a little bit afterwards but um it was certainly coming towards the end and, and that coaching part of it was was certainly important to me yeah, yeah and, and Stevie as well obviously as, as a manager now um when did your interest peak in coaching how old were you when you you suddenly thought oh, that'll be the next step was it the next logical step for you uh, well, it was a bit of a weird one in as much that I went up to Peter as uh, uh, Peterborough as a uh, player coach and, you know, sort of served as under Barry for, for three years. And, uh, you know, we had, I'd, I had quite a few, you know, sort of coaching partners, as it were, really. Um, and then after the, the, the final, I, I decided to go back to, to Leighton Orient and, and go just back as a player. Uh, but carried on my coaching at, uh, at, at West Ham Academy um, and then just went into non-league, um, which, you know, I probably haven't progressed any more than that in regards to standard. But it's really been enjoyable. Uh, took loads and loads of things out of every single coach, uh, including the three guys that you've got there, um, that, you know, good, bad or indifferent, that you, you do it your own way. But, you know, sort of... Uh, you know, there's there's always very very good traits that you can you can learn off of, and 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 that I did. Yeah, and and Andy as well. Obviously, you got a position within the FA at this moment in time, but you've you've also coached younger age groups. And um, do you think it's important sometimes to pass on experience to the to the next generation? Because as I say, football when and I don't mean to be disrespectful in any way, shape, or form here, but football when you play um, is is a lot different now to what it is in in the modern day. I think in some aspects it's different. I think in a lot of other ways it's exactly the same. I still see the same challenges for young players and you see what breeds success. You know, good culture, good environment. They're the buzzwords. And it wasn't called that then. It was called team spirit. But that, that's a massive, massive part of it. Um, you know, going back to, to my influence, I didn't think about it towards the end of my career. I was fortunate that, that Steve asked me to coach with him at, at St Albans. That was probably my, my first opportunity while I was coaching the youngsters at Arsenal as well. Um, you know, I always felt Steve was Steve's a natural leader and was going to go into that management and uh, has done well. Um, but for me, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't sort of, it wasn't saying I was desperate to go into, but once I got involved in it, I really enjoyed it and, and felt that it was a good, a good path for me. Um, so yeah, I've enjoyed it. But obviously, Barry was an influence. I think, did I just mention that? Let's speak about Barry being an influence. I've 
played with Barry at South End, the Peter and, and Birmingham. So I was fortunate. I think that's the word. Um, but he was great, Barry. He, he had real good energy, good enthusiasm when things were good, and uh, he could spot a player. And you know, so he, he had a lot of good attributes. And like Dave said, him and Wayne bounced bounced off each other well, and we had the influence of Steve. Like I said, who displayed leadership, the experience of Aussie, who used to play for Man City, and, and good good young players coming through like Tiles. You know, so we had a good we had a good blend, good ingredients. Uh, and like you say, a number of us have have gone into coaching, so there must have been something right. And, and Tiles, I know that um, Tony Godden had a, a massive part to play in, in, in your development as a goalkeeper. And I guess now as a coach, you'll be thinking back to the things that he did, like, as we mentioned in that warm-up at Wembley, where you probably felt that things were going to go pear-shaped. And just little words of encouragement, particularly for a keeper, I guess, make all the difference. Yeah, he was brilliant. You know, I mean, I had him for basically my whole career at Peterborough. Um, and then obviously went to Luton for seven years and probably alongside how good Tony was, I had Dimitri Karin as well. So um he was brilliant. He was obviously um you know national goalkeeper, obviously played at Chelsea at the highest level. So just what I was thirty one when I went yeah, thirty one when I went to Luton. So I was still learning. He told me a few things that could obviously make my game better and um obviously coming back here, this is uh what, five years now I've been back. Um so it was towards when I come back here, I sort of thought about coaching and obviously I had a lot of great goalkeeper coaches um, in my career. So just taking little things, like the guys say, from each and every one and, um, and obviously putting your own aspect on uh, on your training and hopefully it's good enough and like um, giving, for me, it's just giving something back. You know what I mean? We've had the privilege of playing for a long time in the game and we've seen a lot of things in the game. So I think, they're quite experienced on um, that front, and my guys, like for me, I just like giving back, and hopefully, it's especially uh, for the young ones who are coming through the academy. You used to see them rise, and obviously, when they go into the first team, you have a sense of pride that you you actually taught them and gave them your experience. And finally, guys, um, obviously, 20 years ago on uh, May 26th, which is obviously um, coming up as we record this. Um, when you look back, David, at, at that particular success, I, I imagine any any promotion, any medal will rank quite highly in your career. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's um, whatever level, it's tough, it's difficult. And um, it, from my point of view, it was a... Uh, it was... Uh, a privilege to come into a group that um, that had started, the ball had started to roll, the results had started, to, the performances had started to get better and that sort of stuff. So it was a good group for me to come into. But it's um, it's as important as it was any anything you're doing in there. And, and to try and get, as, a, as the boys know, as everybody knows, to have some sort of tangible recognition of that particular year and the hard work that everybody put in was uh, makes it very special indeed. And it's, um, thank you for, for, for having me back on to talk about it, Phil, because it's Peterborough has been a big factor, and and, and that game in particular was uh, was a big moment. Yeah, and Andy, when you look back now, as you say, twenty years ago, um, the the camaraderie, the team spirit, what the dressing room was like, the nights out, um, David Oldfield's boring stories. I mean, there, there are um, <laughs> there, there are things that stay with you. Yeah, de- definitely, definitely. Like I say, you, you can always meet up with people five, ten years after not seeing them, and. And it's like you, you've never been away sort of thing. So it was a special time. Um, I mean, I was, I was fortunate. I, I was part of six promotions, I think, in my career. Two at South End, early stage, and went back to South End and two again. One at Rushton. But, but for me, the standout one was, was Peter, where I had the, most, the biggest contribution. But if I could go back to, to any moment, it would be, it would be that, that night at Wembley, to be honest, in my career. And Stevie, just finally, when you walked out of the tunnel at Wembley, um, as someone, as you say, coming towards the end potentially of their career at the time and thinking back to the fact that, you know, you, you, your dad had obviously played in the amateur cup final. What, what, was, what was going through your mind when you walked out of that tunnel? Was it pride in what you'd achieved? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, it, it's, it's a goal for, for everybody. Uh, not everyone does it. Um, you know, whether it be through, you know, whatever finals or, or, or playoff finals or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, it, it was something that has, has always been a quest, if you like. And, uh, um, you know, we, we 
got to it, albeit very, very late on in my career. But uh, you know, I think I think the probably one word would just be pride. Um, you know, it was just pride for you know the the, the whole group that had had had, a, a, had a, an incredible season. And as Dave said, you know, we built up to it. It didn't start very well, um, but we got there. And uh, as I say, yeah, they are very proud to be part of it. And, and Tiles, just finally, obviously, as someone who's been connected with the football club for such a long time, I mean, the reason why he's not retired is he's still hoping to get Tommy Robson's appearance record. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, he's counting training games, five sides and friendlies now. But um, I, I guess that when, when you look back at the, the long career, that will always stand out because of the team that you had, the, the camaraderie you had, and also, obviously, the success you had. Yeah, definitely. Um... But like I said, a promotion on your CV is, is, is what you want, you know what I mean? Um, and especially with the team when we had, we were so together and uh, hard working and, you know what I mean? And obviously, Clark, he would take all the plaudits because he scored the goal. But um, we, were, we were such a close, like I said, close-knit team and the squad we had was... Uh, the ability in the squad, we had, we knew we had the ability in the squad, and and it just on that night it just come, come together, and obviously we won the game. Um, I mean, it, I've lost at Wembley as well, so it's it's I've been on both sides, so it's not a nice feeling when you lose. But uh, this one is it was all about the together together uh, togetherness of the team, and, and you know I mean that will always stay in memory uh, for a long time. Well, guys, I just want to thank you for, for taking the time to, to reminisce a, a walk down memory lane as, as it is. And 20 years, obviously, I joined the football club in 2001 and, and I'm incredibly old. And I'm worried, to be honest with you, that it looks like I'm the only one out of the five of us that are on screen at the moment that are losing their hair. But um, it's, uh, it, it, it is nice to, to look back. So I do appreciate you, you taking the time to do that with us.